I admit there's times I've come to the platform where someone super intelligent comes up before me and, and in my head I'm thinking, oh shoot. How am I gonna compare with that? Guy like Bill Johnson shows up and I'm like, oh. <laughs> what I've, what, I've done like four miracles. It, you know, it's just, <laughs> those, you know what I'm talking about, like those thoughts just go through your head as a human. And, uh, and what Paul says is, once I start going down that road, I diminish the cross of its power. These eloquent speakers out there, he goes, I'm not gonna play that game. In fact, he says in chapter two, verse one, he goes, when I came to you, brothers, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He goes, I just, I made a decision. When I show up, I'm just gonna talk about Jesus and how he was crucified. It should be enough just to go, okay, there's a God in heaven. An almighty God who's keeping us alive, who created you. You're breathing right now. You, you hear me right now because of him. He could take away your hearing in a second. He could do that before this, this, this gathering is over. He, he could take your breath away. And he loved you so much that he sends his son. Like he's watching his son on the cross. Why? Because he wants oneness with us. He goes, I'm just going to preach that. I'm not gonna get into these, these different you know, eloquent debates or whatever, I'm just gonna preach Christ crucified. And so when I saw the theme, I go, Christ crucified. Okay, so am I supposed to preach on that? But then if I preach on that, what's Michael gonna preach on? And then if Michael preaches on that, and then what's Miller gonna preach on? What's Chris, Christine Kane's coming, what's she gonna preach? We're all just gonna preach Christ crucified? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we could, we can have all of you preach Christ crucified. And I hope that never gets old to you. That every time you hear the gospel, you're like, that's right, that's right. Oh my gosh, you did that, you did that. I mean, I hope every time we worship and we sing these songs, your, your soul's going, yes, yes, every time. Then we don't get bored. We don't feel like we have to get creative. It's like those angels that just keep saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I mean, when we were singing that one chorus, you know, blessing and honor, and, I don't remember now, uh, <laughs> be unto the Lamb, and, you know. I just felt like, let's just do that all night. Let's just do that all night. Let's join, because the angels are doing it. Let's just join with them and just keep doing that and doing that. I mean, I wasn't done. I could have kept going because it's like, oh my God, there's just something so exciting about it. I'm joining with heaven and all of you, and we're all looking at that same person and, and just blessing him. It doesn't get old. If the cross and thought of Christ being crucified no longer moves you, that is such a tragic thing. If, if you need someone else, a more dynamic speaker to preach Christ crucified before you're stirred, that's a dangerous thing. That's a scary thought because something should be moving inside of you to where you don't need me to externally motivate you. 
but this is kind of what we've, we've done in the church. Sometimes like, okay, he doesn't do that for me anymore. That song doesn't do it for me anymore. Let's come up with something new. See, the more your inner person matures, the more you mature internally, the less you need external hype to motivate you. Have you noticed that? So, so if Michael says, hey, Francis, let's just go in that room back there. Let's pray the Lord's prayer together. Come on, Bill, and let's, let's take communion together. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Christ might, might, might manifest in that room in some special. Let's go. See, this is the way church was for centuries. People would come and go, oh, we're going to break bread. We're going to break bread. We're going to take the cup as a, as a family. We're going to recite the very Lord's Prayer, those same words that came out of Jesus' mouth. We're going to say them together. We're going to say the same liturgies we, that people have said for centuries, and we're going to say it again, the same thing we said last week. Oh, I can't wait to get there. For centuries, that was enough. And then something changed in my generation. In the 70s, it was like, okay, not just, don't just get up there and tell the truth. Don't bore people with the word of God. I remember being told that. In Bible college, it's a, bore, it's, a, it's a sin to bore people with the word of God. So then it's like, okay, then um, let me figure out how to do this. You know, had some jokes, had some stories, had some, you know, moving videos and everything else. You know, because I don't want to bore you with the word of God. See, something changed in that era where, where for, for centuries it was enough for someone to read from this book. And just to declare the truth and lay it out. When you look at the prophets, they just, they just said it. But then something changed. And now it's like, now I've got to say it dynamically. I've got to do it in a way that grips your heart. And now suddenly, you know, it's, it's I'm in sin if I bore you with the word of God. This was what I was thinking. This is what I was taught. And so now suddenly, all the pressure is on this guy up front. It used to be that all the pressure was on you to get your heart right and go, oh, I'm about to partake of the bread and the cup, you know? That's why even in the Old Testament, they they would, the Psalms of Ascent, I'm going to take a step towards the temple and read a psalm and get my heart right. Take another step and read another psalm and get my heart right. And I'm going to guard my steps as I get near to the house of God. I don't want to offer the sacrifice. It was on me to get my heart ready for this. And then somehow it turned in my generation. And so you can just show up late, rush into the service, and now it's my job to move your heart and get you to the right place. And then if I bore you with the word of God, it's on me. Whereas Jesus would just lay it down and says, he who has ears, let him hear. You know, it's... Jesus, it's not about my mouth, it's about your ears. 